Good morning, everyone. We're just going to wait a few minutes for everyone to uh, join, and we will get started in a few minutes. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for a follow-up web webinar on the Brownfield Opportunity Areas Program. My name is Leslie Zlatev. I am the BOA CFA Coordinator and a Revitalization Specialist with the Division of Community and Economic Development in the Departments of Ac Office of Planning, Development, and Community Infrastructure. I will be joined today by David Ashton, the Director of the Division, who will be fielding questions with me at the end of our webinar. This webinar will provide an overview of the Department of State's 2023 Brownfield Opportunity Areas Grant Program, including eligibility and evaluation criteria. For more in-depth information on grant requirements, it's highly recommended all applicants read the entire Request for Applications, RFA. The RFA and additional grant application resources are available on the Department of State's Funding and Bid Opportunities website. <clears throat> Our first webinar held on May 24th provided more details on each of the four grant categories. The first webinar is in the process of being posted to the DOS website. The webinars as well as the RFA are recommended to be used as further resources if you want more information on individual grant categories. Approximately $2.5 million in funding is available from the department for BOA activities in the 2023-2024 funding year through the consolidated funding application.
Just a few housekeeping details before I go further. Today attendees are muted, but you can ask questions in the chat section of the webinar. On the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you will see the chat bubble. If you click on that, you will see the chat box appear as shown on this slide. Simply enter your question in the chat and we will, be, we will try to get to as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation. Just note, we may, may not be able to get to all of your questions, but we are recording everything and we will provide an answer in the formal written Q&A, which will be posted on our website on July 7th. Also note, we will not be able to answer any specific questions about eligibility. Eligibility is not always straightforward and we will based and will be based on the information provided in the application. So please refer to the program RFA for eligibility criteria. If you have additional questions that come to mind at the end of the webinar, you may also have you may also use that opportunity to write in questions for the formal Q&A. We will provide that information at the end of this webinar as well. Brownfields are properties that are difficult to redevelop due to the presence or potential presence of contaminants. They can include older industrial properties, formal dry cleaners, gas stations, abandoned institutional commercial buildings, and other obsolete, vacant, or underutilized properties. The presence of known or suspected brownfields can have a detrimental effect on the surrounding neighborhood or community, resulting in area-wide blight and disinvestment. The New York Department of State's Brownfield Opportunity Area, or BOA program, was designed to help impacted communities develop and realize a vision for strat and strategy for the area-wide revitalization of areas affected by brownfields and related disinvestment. Through the BOA program, these known and suspected brownfields are transformed from liabilities to community assets that generate businesses, jobs, and revenues for local economies and provide new housing and public amenities. The types of areas where program resources are being applied include industrial and manufacturing zones, commercial corridors, mixed-use neighborhoods, downtowns, and waterfronts. BOA focuses resources to encourage redevelopment of strategic sites within the BOA. The BOA program empowers communities. It provides the planning framework, funding, and technical assistance to address brownfields and brownfield impacted areas, enabling communities to envision and plan for future growth. Through the development of a BOA plan, formerly known as a BOA nomination, communities evaluate existing conditions, build consensus on desired future uses, and establish goals for area-wide revitalization and redevelopment of strategic sites, all while promoting environmental equity. Following designation of a BOA by the Secretary of State, eligible applicants can request funding for additional pre development activities and phase two environmental site assessments to advance community supported implementation projects identified in the plan. BOA funding is available for up to 90% of total eligible project costs for the four types of activities listed on this slide. These include First, completing a pre-planning inventory, assessment and preliminary analysis of land use areas potentially affected by brownfields within a county or expansive area to identify concentrations of brownfield and underutilized properties for future planning efforts. The second activity is the planning activity to develop a brownfield opportunity area plan, formerly known as a board nomination, which creates a strategy for revitalization. Third, Pre-development activities to advance the community's vision and projects within the state designated BOA. And lastly, phase two environmental site assessments to guide future land use decisions on specific sites within a state designated BOA. Sorry. A more detailed overview of these activities can be found in the posted request for application and in the first webinar noted earlier. Eligible applicants may apply for any of the four grant categories. The maximum for each grant awarded under this solicitation is $500,000, but 
with a minimum grant award of $100,000. The amount requested must be thoroughly justified and supported as we will discuss in more detail later. An application for funding should only include one type of activity. Eligible applicants wishing to apply for more than one grant type or multiple activities should apply, should submit separate applications, one for each activity type. Budget and supplemental material requirements must be included with each application as directed in the CFA. Eligible applicants in the, for the Brownfield Opportunity Areas Program include municipalities, certain non-for-profit organ, community-based organizations, and New York City community boards. The one activity I wanted to touch on in more detail um, and give you a greater um, background of is the community-wide pre-planning activity. It is new this year. Com county-wide pre-planning is the identification, inventory, and analysis of brownfield affected areas within a county or other large geographic area to identify concentrations of brownfield and underutilized properties for future more localized planning efforts, such as the development of the BOA plan. The analysis shall come the description and justification of an area or areas within a county for future BOA planning with associated boundaries, a basic description of current land use and zoning, the proximity of potential brownfield sites to infrastructure assets, an assessment of existing and ongoing planning efforts, descriptions of existing brownfield sites and other underutilized properties, a description of the area's potential for revitalization, including the potential for renewable energy siting, as a set of action steps that can be taken to advance future BOA planning efforts. Outcomes of this county-wide pre-planning activity will include identification and mapping of underutilized vacant and abandoned parcels to create a county-wide inventory, and the identification of smaller areas or clusters within the study area that are recommended for future BOA planning and designation by the state. The countywide pre-planning activity will enable counties to better understand development conditions surrounding potential brownfield clusters and integrate existing and ongoing planning efforts into the BOA program. Pre-planning does not culminate in a BOA designation though. Countywide pre-planning is intended for counties that have minimal information on the number and extent of potential brownfield sites and related underutilized sites that may have a significant adverse impact on the community. Pre-planning will enable counties and cooperating local municipalities to conceive a holistic approach for long-term economic development and revitalization. Now I wanted to go over the BOA evaluation criteria in a little detail. Applications meeting the eligibility criteria will be reviewed and scored according to the program criteria presented. All eligible applications will be evaluated to assess the degree to which they meet the application evaluation criteria published in the BOA program RFA. In filling out your consolidated funding application, please be sure to fully answer all questions clearly and with sufficient detail. The BOA CFA questions correspond to the program evaluation criteria as found in the Request for Applications Section 9 Application Evaluation Criteria and summarized here on this slide. For each CFA question, applicants should click on the Question Requirements link for, future, for further directions on what should be addressed in the detailed response. The Question Requirement 2 will assist applicants in addressing the question content in full to maximize the points awarded for each question. Out of 100 possible points, the Department of State Office of Planning and Development is responsible for awarding up to 80 points. The remaining 20 points are awarded by the Regional Economic Developments Council. Depending on the degree to which the proposed project advances the REDC strategic plan. Further assigning points to sub criteria. Be attentive to the evaluation criteria chart included in the RFA starting on page 11. Each activity may have different evaluative sub-criteria and associated scoring within the broader criteria. In the example here for the Brownfields Opportunity Criteria, if applying for countywide pre-planning or development of a BOA plan, you would be asked 
within the CFA to address the first three sub-criteria for up to four, four points each, each with a total of 12 points available. Alternatively, if you are applying for pre-development activities or phase two environmental site assessments, you will be asked to address the fourth and fifth sub-criteria shown here for up to six points each with the same 12 points available. In the next several slides, we'll address a few of the evaluation criteria more specifically. For economic distress, applicants can receive up to six points. For this criteria, the application should identify indicators of economic distress by census tract within each of the indicators listed here, worth two points up to a maximum of six points available for the criteria. And applicants need, an applicant needs to demonstrate meeting three of the criteria above to get full points. It is important to cite the source of the information in your narrative to support your response for each of the indicators. The scope of work. Applicants can receive up to 10 points. The scope of work details and defines the project for which you are applying within guidelines of each eligible activity. In order to present a successful application, a clear and detailed scope of work is required. A scope of work should include a description of the task to be undertaken along with specific defined deliverables. If applying for BOA pre-development activities, it is especially important that the scope of work includes defined deliverables that advance the BOA plan towards implementation. As with all BOA work, community engagement is foundational. The scope of work shall include a plan to provide inclusive engagement as appropriate for the chosen activity that identifies those who may be affected by the project and develops strategies to engage them in all aspects of the BOA work. Finally, the scope of work will be the basis upon which you would develop your project costs and budget. Without a well-defined scope of work, quantifying costs will be difficult to develop and justify making points for the budget and costs harder to achieve. The evaluation of budget and cost applicants can receive up to 20 points. The project budget is worth more points than any other category. It is worth spending time to thoroughly document and justify your proposed project budget. A budget attachment is required as part of the application and should be completed fully and attached to the CFA. <clears throat> the budget template includes categories for salaries, wages, travel, supplies and materials, equipment, contractual services and others. There are example budgets with illustrative budgets for each of the four eligible BOA activities to help applicants to understand how to organize budgets. Please take a look at these examples located on our website. If a project includes multiple components, this would be most likely if in budgets for pre-development activities or phase two environmental site assessments. The budget shall show the cost of each component. The budget should clearly relate to all tasks and deliverables within the scope of work. Be realistic and specific in preparing your budget. Clearly and completely justify the amount being requested. Explain how the budget was determined and the method used to arrive at the estimates. Applicants should describe how the project will be monitored over the course of the project to ensure that it remains within the proposed budget. Now I will go into some CFA tips and tricks to help you better answer the application. The CFA application platform has experienced a few important changes this year. Changes that are intended to improve the user interface and make the application process easier and more intuitive. Please visit the main CFA webpage shown on this slide for the CFA process guide. Here you will find links and more in-depth directions on how to navigate the CFA application platform and how to assess resources 
how to access resources about the CFA grant programs available. Within the CFA application platform, the program wizard highlighted here option will allow, enable you to at you as the applicant to find all programs that are relevant for funding based on the project scope of work. The program webinars and frequently asked questions will address many of the questions that prospective applicants may have about respective programs. The FAQs and webinars are resourceful tools to assist the applicant in addressing the CFA program questions in the most succinct and thorough way. Under many of the threshold questions, as you can see here, um, under many of the threshold questions, attachment questions, and standard questions within the program application, a colored text button will appear that says, click here for question requirements. It is highly advisable that the applicant click this button or link if identified below the question text in the CFA to display further directions on how to best answer that question. For a preview of each program question, you can see here where it lists program questions. You may click this link for the CFA process guide webpage. Once you click on that link, this screen will appear. For a preview of the questions, please click on the link labeled questions next to the program title. In this example, where the arrow points is the Brownfield Opportunity Areas program title. Click on the link for questions and it will display the questions that are um, within the program. To access related webinars on a description of the program and detailed funded activities, please click on the webinars link to the right of the Brownfield Opportunity Areas program title and right of the questions um, text box shown in this slide. In closing, as you formulate your project and budget, consider the following. To be most competitive, be focused, specific, and complete with your answers to the questions presented in the CFA. Applications that are generic and unfocused do not score well, so to score the best, please be as specific as possible. Incorporate what makes your project meaningful and impactful into answers to questions in the CFA. Consider how the proposed project fits into your overall revitalization efforts and those of your Regional Economic Development Council. If there is strong support from local leadership, explain why. Remember, BO is an area-wide planning program. It is not just about brownfields, but also vacant, underutilized, and abandoned properties within the area. Finally, be sure to directly and completely address all questions and criteria and refer to the question requirements link located below most CFA BOA questions to address the specifics required for each question located within the program questionnaire. The request for applications related to this solicitation is available at the Department of State's website shown on this slide. All applicants are encouraged to read the RFA in its entirety as grant programs and requirements may change from year to year. Written questions on the BOA grant program RFA should be directed by email or by mail to the address noted on this slide. Responses to questions received by June 16th 2023 will be reposted by July 7, 2023 on the department's website. When corresponding by email, please clearly indicate the subject as 23-BOA-02RFA questions. To the degree possible, each inquiry should cite the RFA section and paragraph to which it refers. Once Questions received by the due date will be posted with re answers on the department's website noted above. The question and answer section will be updated during the solicitation period to remain current with final responses posted on the website on July 9th. Please refer to the RFA for further details and dates at the website identified on this slide. 
Thank you. And we will open it to questions at this point. Thanks, Leslie. Appreciate that. Uh, so that's the end of the formal, uh, formal presentation. If there are questions, please enter them in the chat and we will address them. We'll just give a moment if anyone has any questions. Have any currently? I'll just give one more minute in case someone's typing something in. While we're waiting, just a reminder. Um, the deadline for questions is June 16th, and the deadline for applications is July 28th at 4 p.m. through the CFA. To be on the safe side, I would certainly recommend submitting your application prior to July 28th, if that's possible, um, as the portal will be very busy on that last day and may get bogged down, and we certainly would not want you to uh, experience anything unexpected and to uh, fail to get your application submitted. So doing it earlier would certainly be better. Um, okay, we now have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, what section would a phase one environmental site assessment fall under? So a phase one environmental site assessment could be undertaken as part of a uh, development of a BOA plan. Um, it could also be done as a um, pre-development activity uh, as well. So either one of those um, would work. Uh, we have a question about who can apply. Who can apply for a BOA grant? Is it only entities or also private landowners? Um, eligible applicants are uh, municipalities, certain community-based organizations, and New York City community boards. Um, so a private landowner would not be eligible to apply. But certainly if there was interest, um, I would encourage you to speak with your local municipality about the potential of them um, applying for an area in your community. Um, then we have a question about landfills. Are areas that were formerly landfills eligible to be included in the BOA program? Um, certainly a former landfill could be included in a, um, in a BOA area that's, that's proposed. Um, that would certainly be eligible, uh, not, not a problem at all. Just to follow on with that, I, I wouldn't necessarily encourage a landfill to be the only thing in a BOA area, but a landfill could be a study area, um, certainly. Those are all the questions we have for the moment. Again, I'll just give it a minute to see if there are any others. Okay, I don't see any, any other questions coming in. Uh, we finished one minute early. I appreciate everyone's participation. Oh, um, sorry, two other questions just came in as I was saying that. Um, on the landfill question, uh, there's a question as to whether someone can follow up. Um, you can certainly follow up with an additional question through the formal uh, submission of, of questions via the RFA. Um, and then when will a recording of this webinar be posted? It should be posted in the next couple of days, if not today, so very soon. So I think that's everything. I appreciate everyone's time and interest in the BOA program, and we look forward to seeing your applications as they come in through the CFA. Again, a final reminder, applications through the CFA are due July 28th at 4 p.m., and it's best not to leave it to the last moment. Uh, so good luck, and thanks, everyone, for your time.